We are always told that when you start your journey in filmmaking that you should use whatever camera you have available at the time. First, let's talk about gear. Gear doesn't matter. Sure, you may have had a decent DSLR or mirrorless camera, but chances are all you have is your phone. In this part of a two-part series, I'm going to look at the theory aspect of shooting on your phone, whilst part two is going to be a bit more practical and I'm actually going to go and shoot something on my own phone. This is going to be a bit of a shorter video and I did mean to have a video essay on Skyfall coming out instead, but I've had to postpone it by a few days, so watch out for that next Wednesday. In today's video, I'm going to look at the three things that you need to know when shooting on your phone and how you can achieve them. I'm looking at this from a more iPhone perspective as that's what I use, however this really applies to whatever kind of phone you have. Movement is one of the most important aspects in cinematography. Now with most cinema cameras, it's really easy to have a good looking image. You can go handheld and have the weight for it look cinematic immediately. However, with an iPhone or any kind of phone for that matter, it will be extremely shaky. And whilst you may have in-camera stabilization, it won't look nearly as good as if you were using an actual camera. Now, the best way to get around this is simply to shoot on a tripod. A gimbal would also work, but I personally don't like how mechanical they look as I feel as though it takes away from the actual story that is being told. Really, movement should be one of the last things that you think about. Once you can compose and expose an image properly and then control everything with ease, that's when you should start thinking about how you can move your phone to make your shots that bit more interesting. So this one's pretty simple. With phone cinematography, it's pretty hard to use mechanical controls when you don't have an app. For example, on my iPhone, I use Filmic Pro. It's what I'll be using in the next video and it's probably the most recommended app regarding filmmaking on an iPhone that there is. With it, I'm able to control pretty much everything, from the limited f-stop to even the white balance. It also allows you to put a different aspect ratio over the footage, which is very helpful when you want to use letterboxing or any sort of aspect ratio for that matter. Ultimately, out of any of the tips in today's video, this is the most important. It's the tip that will help you the most in your cinematography career, as well as being the one that will make it look the nicest when shooting on your phone. As always, lighting is king. You can pretty much use the same lighting plans as you usually would on any other camera. However, since you are watching this video, you are probably not in a position to have a ton of lights lying around. In this case, simply using natural lighting and shooting at magic hour is the biggest cheat code in cinematography there is. The lighting is just incredible at that hour. When I first started out, I just used lamps from around the house. It's how I first learned to light properly and place and diffuse lighting, as well as it just being a lot of fun. There is a lot of problem solving when you first start out, but it has to have been the most enjoyable part of this whole career so far. It's just so satisfying to finally try out a different style of lighting and then for it to actually look good. Overall, award-winning films have been shot on phones. Directors such as Sean Baker and Steven Soderbergh have shot incredible features on iPhones, so clearly it isn't the equipment holding you back, it's what you do with it. I hope you enjoyed this first video on shooting on a phone. Watch out for the next episode where I'll actually be doing so, and not just talking about it behind a microphone. If you found this video helpful, a like is appreciated, and if you'd like to see more videos like this, then hit the subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.